the early part of this unit, as you know, we focused on how the psychological domain shapes behavior, exploring the role of personal and cognitive processes along with our values and worldviews, and the interrelationship between the person and the wider social and cultural context. In the last module, we began to move out into the physical environment, which is actually the main focus of this unit. We began to move in the physical environment by considering the meaning of place, sense of attachment to various physical locations, the meanings that we attach to a particular place. In this module now, we take the next step. No longer confined to individual place, we look at how we navigate and find our way within the extended physical environment. The ability to find our way in complex environments is one of the most fundamental cognitive functions that we have. It involves maintaining a sense of direction, updating our changing locations, all while moving about within a complex world. We rely on these abilities for everything from basic survival, like finding food and getting to work, to simply navigating and engaging in social and leisure activities. So going out with friends and going out to the movies. We, this all requires navigating the world, making sense of it all, and finding our way within it. So while all of this is clearly indispensable, many of us take such abilities for granted. We only ever become really aware of the difficulty involved when things start to go wrong. So when we get lost, for instance, or if we feel overwhelmed by a complex environment that requires many decisions in order to navigate successfully. Feeling disoriented or lost can lead to anxiety and even fear. However, when we understand our environment, we may actually derive a sense of psychological comfort. Wayfinding, then, is the overall process by which we navigate our various environmental settings. It is facilitated by our capacity to form cognitive maps. These are our mental representations of our physical, spatial environment. Both wayfinding and the accuracy of our cognitive maps are facilitated by the legibility of our environment. That is, the distinctiveness of the features within an environment and the ease with which they can be understood and categorized. Cognitive mapping itself is based on two related processes, spatial cognition and environmental cognition. These come together to produce our cognitive maps and to service our process of wayfinding. So to enable us to make our way through the environment and understand what we're doing and how we're going to do it. In brief, spatial cognition is our understanding of ourselves in relation to our surroundings. That is, the places, the objects, and the people that we come across within the environment. It allows us to understand where we are physically in space, and then to use that understanding to plan our movements, and to update all of this according to the changing conditions or locations that we encounter. Environmental cognition, on the other hand, refers to the awareness information, images and beliefs that we all have about the environment, the things and people and places within it. Cognitive mapping combines environmental and spatial cognition. It integrates our thinking about and acting within the environment so that we can perform the activities that we need or, or that we want to undertake. In looking at the concept of cognitive maps, will be uncovering some of the principles that guide their development. In particular, we'll be focusing on those that contribute to a sense of legibility. 
those that aid our understanding and navigation of the environment. From there, we'll explore the steps involved in the process of wayfinding and navigation itself. Identifying the underlying processes. And finally, employing the principles that we discover within all of this, we'll be considering some of the ways that we can make wayfinding easier, more effective. Overall, then, this leads us to considering three questions within this module. First of all, obviously, what exactly is cognitive mapping? And secondly, what is wayfinding and navigation? And finally, how can wayfinding be enhanced? Within this discussion, we'll be considering some of the implications of technology.